So um, this is um, this is about listening and all of the things that we've been talking about today so far really have been about um, ourselves and our own mental health and our our well-being. And um, as I'm a team coach, a lot of the work I do is with groups of people. Um, and one of the things that I've been fascinated by um, ever since starting my coaching journey is the power of listening. Um, so that's really what I'm going to talk about today. Um, the quote that you can see in front of you, I'm sure everybody has heard before. Everybody is very well aware of. They may not have heard this version, but something similar. Um, we all know that we should listen better. We all know that we should make uh, a, a better attempt to listen. Um, generally speaking, if we're going back to scoring, I'm probably... Um, Professionally, I'm a, I'm a nine and three quarters when it comes to listening. On a personal level, I'm probably about a four. Um, it, it really depends on the, the, um, the context of the listening that I need to do. My partner will tell you I never listen to anything he says, but <clears throat> never mind. Right, okay, so um, why is it important to listen? Um, if... Um, this is really about the power that you give somebody when you're listening to them. So this isn't about you. This is about what you can give to somebody else. And um, so I wanted to look at how it makes you feel when people don't listen to you. Um, so I've got some lovely negative emotions um, here for you. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, am one of four children born within six years of each other. And um, being heard is, was something that was very, very difficult. Um, you know, we're all quite opinionated and loud. Um, and so, you know, I do understand all of these things, not just from a family point of view, but it's something I've had to live with um, for a long, long time. And when we aren't heard, these are the things that we feel. Um, there may be many more emotions that we all feel too but it how does that then impact on how we think when nobody is listening to us when we are not being heard how does that affect how we think if we think that people don't value what we have to say what really happens is we stop thinking um, and we certainly stop thinking deeply and I think it's really important to understand that when you listen to somebody what you're really doing is is you're giving them a gift you're actually saying i'm interested in what you've got to say and and you're worth listening to um, <clears throat> so as i said um this is really about giving somebody the gift of the ability to think um so most of the time when we think we particularly at the moment with the influence of social media um, and the state of the world um, and how people are so polarized at the moment you know that there, there is very much this side or that side there's not a lot of gray in the middle and a lot of that comes from the fact that people have, have, have stopped thinking because we stopped listening to each other um, and there's um, a list of things that we do I'm hoping that some of those resonate with you that sometimes um, we think because somebody else says that's what you should think and so you start to think the way they do. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine recently who's going through a difficult time and um, and we were talking about how she can think and she said all oh, the problem is whenever I speak to somebody I take on their thinking you know so she takes on their perspective Right, and then forgets her own. Um, so she's now actively not listening to people, not asking for advice. Um, it's difficult. I think we are all encouraged to talk. Um, you know, that's come up multiple times already this morning. Um, but actually, we should be letting people talk and work through their issues themselves rather than provide solutions for them. So we need to create more thinking. Um, and in order to do that, we have to start listening better. Um, and if we all just could listen a little better, 
then hopefully we'll be able to make those changes. Um, I'm just going to give you a little story um, in order to illustrate the point. Um, this is a story about Greg. About 10 years ago, um, I was working in a company and um, what we done is we'd set up a series of focus groups for the company. So a focus group was a cross-section of employees of all levels um, across the business that would get together once every week, every two weeks, to discuss um, company culture, values, but also current issues, issues of the day. Um, and I led these sessions um, because I wanted people to feel connected to each other. Um, I think it's, it's very easy in business to get very separate um, silos. <clears throat> but also I wanted to hear what they had to say. And I wanted to feel, I wanted people to feel that they had somewhere where they could express their own feelings. So, um, <clears throat> so that's what we did. It was to begin with, um, people really struggled to, to contribute. And I felt like the biggest bully um, ever, as I'm saying. So what do you think? And people are going, hmm, I've not really got anything to say. And I said, oh, come on, you've got to have something to say. But gradually people became more and more confident and they knew that it was a safe space for them to express how they felt. Um, so Greg was um, a team leader in, um, in our warehouse. He worked on uh, receiving goods, goods in. And um, he was very quiet. I'm not, not a chatty man by any stretch of the imagination. And um, the first couple of times he came, he, he barely grunted, as far as I can remember. But once he got into it and he understood the environment, he, he, he raised an issue. And the issue that he raised was um, that he was struggling with overwhelm because deliveries would turn up and he didn't know they were coming um, and he was trying to plan his day and you know goods would arrive at all sorts of time of day I mean it doesn't really matter what the problem was but um, <clears throat> and the idea of focus group was when somebody brought a problem that couldn't be solved in the group um, I would take it away and the senior leadership team would be given the problem um, to or myself to, to solve and um, we couldn't uh, short answer we couldn't solve it so every time we came to the meeting he would raise the same issue and you know it was getting to the point where people were sort of rolling their eyes oh god he's going to go on about that again and um and so one day I decided to do something different and um and so I asked him what he would do um if if there were no restrictions um financial or, or personnel wise um what he would do to make the problem better or to solve the problem. Um, and because he'd been coming and, and he knew that he was going to get his chance to speak and no one was going to interrupt him, actually what happened was um, he went through the whole thinking process out loud in front of the group and nobody interrupted him. Nobody jumped in and said, oh, but you can't, or, oh, I thought you should do this or anything like that. He was just allowed to process that thought, those, that thinking process in front of everybody. And he came up with a solution. And this is one story. This happens time and time and time again in group situations. Um, if it's, it's the person who's not saying anything that you can guarantee is the one that's got the better ideas. Um, so what happened was it, we gave, we facilitated a situation that gave Greg enough time to think about the solution. So he stopped moaning. He stopped saying, I've got this problem, give me a solution. He actually managed to work through and find a solution for himself. So how can we listen better to improve other people's thinking? Um, that giving people good attention makes them more intelligent. I genuinely do believe that because it gives people confidence in their own ability to think. Um, and it is a little gift that you can give people every day just by listening a little bit harder. Um, there's a few uh, tips in there, which I'm sure 
resonate with a lot of people. Um, silence. Some people do love to fill the silence. Um, I it's a tip I give people when I'm coaching them on um, interviewing is uh, or or disciplinary actually any sort of really intense um, one to one situation is let the silence don't um, don't fill the gap. Um, when you're interviewing, what you tend to do is you ask someone a question. If they don't answer, you you jump in and you answer it for them, or you lead them down the path to give them the answer. Um, and a big one for me is be a sounding board, not a solution provider. I'm naturally um, a solution provider. Um, so I actually have that sentence written up on the wall um, above my computer to remind me that I'm not there to provide the solution. I'm there to help them find it for themselves. Um, <clears throat> and again, the if you have to say something um, other than, oh, I see. That's great. Is there any more? Um, it's it's ask one question that reframes the problem or that gives them a different perspective on the problem or empowers them to think differently about the problem. Um, so that's what we have there. I'm sure I feel like I'm rattling through. Um, <laughs> You've actually done your 10. How many slides have you got? No, well, that's it. I'm done. So oh, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to know any more about this, there's a great book called Time to Think, Listening to Ignite the Human Mind by Nancy Klein. I can thoroughly recommend reading that. And if you want to know more about creating great thinking within teams and groups, then get in touch.